the strangest dream last night. Andy Warhol was there, and Jackson Pollock, I think. Floating past a pile of my brother's burning toys was Fellini and, and several Playboy centerfolds. And Paul McCartney, too. It was weird. I dreamed of Fellini eight and a half times. It started out like any other dream. I was someplace familiar, but I didn't know where. There was a swing set, and I'm wearing this multicolored dream shirt that even Picasso would have laughed at. I sat down and started swinging. I was swinging faster and faster. I was swinging so fast, the chains started screaming. I jumped off the swings. And when I landed, I was on this fog-shrouded beach. There was a black dog with something in his mouth. Something of mine, something I needed back. I chased him, but he disappeared into the fog. Then he suddenly appeared again. He was coming towards me from the water. In his mouth, something wrapped in black velvet. I think it was my film degree. I grabbed for it, but I was flung backwards into some other place. The dog and my diploma, nowhere to be found. There was a sign illustrating artificial respiration in graphic detail. Maybe somebody needs to be resuscitated. Maybe some Playboy centerfold. Hopefully not the dog. I pranced around peeping through windows looking for a victim. I walk up to a window and I look in. But inside, I find only myself looking out. The next thing I know, I'm walking down this eerie green hallway like the basement of a hospital or, or the deserted hallways of film school. As I start walking, I feel like someone is following me. I think it's Fellini and he's not too happy with me, so I start running as fast as I can. end up in this cathedral with a big stained glass window. But it's not a church. It's a mausoleum. I start looking at the names on the marble slabs, and one looks familiar. I can't make it out, but I'm sure it says my name. I don't know what this means, but I'm not sticking around to find out. I get the hell out of there fast. I step into an elevator and start pressing buttons. When the door opens, I'm standing outside this colonial mansion. And now I'm wearing a white shirt with a flowing silk scarf like my gay teacher in high school drama class. It's the facade of Desilu Studios, but I'm walking away from it. What does this mean? I come to a large fountain, like the one in La Dolce Vida, but nothing looks familiar. I frame this artsy shot like Fellini through the fountain, but nobody notices. I have no idea what to do next. Then I'm drawn towards something in the distance. 
There's stairs leading up, but I take the steep incline because it's more abstract. I sit down on the uppermost perch. Sitting right next to me is a head wearing a bowler hat, and it's wearing my dark glasses. I pull them off and walk away. I'll show Fellini who's boss. As I pass a large pillar, I notice that my own head is now wearing the bowler hat. Not one bowler hat, but several. This is not the work of Fellini. This is Hal Roach. Now I'm running back towards the studio, but it's too late. Just as I'm about to enter its doorway, the entire facade disintegrates into a crumbling relic. I leap from its dilapidated steps, and I find myself behind the wheel of the car I learned to drive on. I'm in my old neighborhood, where my brother and I grew up. Fellini is sitting on the hood with his camera, and I keep telling him to pan right. He mumbles something and then starts flailing the camera around wildly. But I'm the director. So I step on the gas and he flies off the hood and tumbles onto the pavement. I drive on, but everything suddenly stops. I think I'm out of film. When I wake up, my picture of Fellini falls off the wall and breaks. <laughs>